few words of explanation of what we do here tonight in this baptismal service. We at Village Evangelical Church are met here for a service of believers' baptism. As a church, we believe in the baptism only of believers, and that by total immersion. We see this to be an ordinance, that is, a command of the Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church, and is undertaken by those who wish to express publicly their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation and to give testimony to the spiritual conversion that has taken place in their lives. Such baptism follows on from one's experience of the new birth. And our friend Ash now wishes to be faithful to the New Testament picture of total immersion, which the Greek word baptisma means immersion. We are a bit sad that our Bibles don't translate that word into the English. It's a Greek word, baptism, and uh, it means immersion. If there were sailors in the ancient world who were about to go down with their ship, they would say, we're about to be baptised, we're going to be immersed. And we all know what they meant. And uh, as a Bible-believing church, we believe that total immersion is the only valid baptism what we read in the Bible. Of Christ's baptism, Matthew 3, then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptised of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptised of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfil all righteousness. And then John baptised our Lord. Of Christ's instruction to his disciples on baptism, we have in Matthew 28 this. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. Of the Ethiopians' baptism, we have this in Acts chapter 8. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch. And he baptised him, he immersed him. Of the Apostle Paul on baptism we have in Romans 6, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptised into Jesus Christ were baptised into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. And Paul in Colossians 2, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through faith, the operation of God who have raised him from the dead. Believers' baptism is a heaven-drawn picture. Conversion is the reality. Baptism by immersion is a picture. They're so different. Baptism cannot and does not save anyone. Conversion is real. Baptism is only a picture. Conversion is by the Holy Spirit. Baptism is by man. Conversion is essential to salvation. Baptism is not, but it has been commanded. Baptism is a Christian ordinance. That is, it has been commanded by our Lord Jesus Christ to be done. And believers, of course, want to obey. Why is a Christian believer to be baptised? Well, several reasons. It helps the Christian to testify publicly that they have been converted by the grace of God. 
This is why this is not uh, a time for congratulations or for applause. We uh, have the right response in our heart to this baptism, that is, praise God that someone else has been saved. Praise God that our brother has found the Lord Jesus Christ. It also helps the church to remember that conversion of sinners is what we must seek and pray for. And it also helps unbelievers to see that they are not Christians and they need to be conversion. Well, briefly, what is the picture? It is a picture of obedience in which we obey Christ's command. It is a picture of forgiveness in which immersion in water illustrates the washing away of a whole body of sin. It is a picture of new life in which the imagery of burial and rising again illustrates the enormous change of having died in the old life to receive a new and converted life. And it is a picture of identification with Christ, in which we tread in the steps of our Saviour to show we identify with Him more than all others and will continue to follow Him in all things. This is why we baptise our brother here tonight.
Rashi. I'd like to ask you two questions for the congregation. First, do you believe that the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is the only way by which sin may be forgiven? Yes, I do. And do you believe that you've experienced that new birth that comes from above? Yes, I do. Uh, after the baptism, we will sing the choruses as the custom amongst other churches uh, from Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. So when our brother is rising from the baptism, um, uh, we will sing that chorus. personal Lord and Saviour, and upon your own request, I baptise you into the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> 